All right, what's up guys? Justin here doing a solo video with some consolidated updates on the house progress. Pretty exciting, let's flip you around. And you can see things are looking quite a bit different. So first of all, that color that you see is not the final paint or color or finish or anything like that. We'll come back to that in a second. Starting back where you saw us last was the uh, roof trusses that we were installing in the previous video. Quite a bit of progress since then, but no updates. So this one will just kind of collapse a bunch of things into one video. So after we said the trusses, the next thing up was the uh, installing the roof deck. The roof deck is, um, instead of using plywood like most people, we went with uh, this material that's a lot like a concrete board. It's not made out of concrete, it's made out of uh, magnesium oxide. The benefit of that is that it is non-combustible. So, you know, we're in a high fire prone area. If some um, fire moves through or some big embers land on the roof, which will only have a uh, sheet metal roof, uh, the hopefully the uh, that uh, cement board like material will hold up better uh, for fire concerns. So we went and got all that installed. After that, we installed the roof underlayment. So the roof underlayment is a product called Shark Skin. It uses a uh, self-adhering layer. Basically, it's really sticky. So a lot of roof underlayments you would have to nail down or staple down. This one, we can just sort of unroll it and then unroll the sticky part and uh, stick it down to the roof deck. So that material is um, able to hold up to the weather elements for up to 12 months. So there's no uh, urgent hurry to actually install the metal roof, although we have it here. Uh, kind of the order of things, the way we have our eaveless uh, design going kind of requires us to wait on that one a little bit, but we can get the uh, roof membrane on there to help keep it protected from the elements. So after the roof underlayment was on, the next thing we installed was this uh, kind of blue or gray looking uh, color that you see over the plywood. That is a, essentially it's a water and air membrane. That whole system is um, intended to be installed as a, a rain screen, but essentially, well, okay, rain screen basically means that it's the final waterproofing layer. So the cladding that we'll put over the house will be stucco but it's not um, using this basically allows us to not depend on the stucco for final waterproofing so eventually all stucco or plaster is going to crack so what that will do is uh, if any water gets behind the cracks and any stucco then it gets to that blue gray layer which uh, is kind of a, a permanent water shedding layer as well as an air barrier so all houses you want to keep as much air of air out of them as possible so it's uh, designed to kind of completely seal it up and um, keep the air out, which is nice for uh, reducing uh, any, anything getting in that we don't want. Now the other part of that system that you can see is this red coating. We'll go a little closer around the windows. That's essentially a liquid flashing layer. So most flashings that you see are, uh, you know, they're like a tape type product. This one installs more or less like, um, like caulk. Uh, so it's not, not too hard to work with. Basically you spread that around the gap between the window and the, the blue layer and that is also providing a water and air barrier. Now the blue gray part wasn't too hard to install. It was more or less like paint. So uh, we just used a roller and rolled it on and um, just kind of chased the shade around working around the structure to, uh, to get it all on. I suppose it only took really just a couple days or something like that. And uh, similarly with the red part, it's also not too tough to install. It's just a matter of using a caulk gun and a, a putty knife and just kind of getting it spread around. Now under the windows, you can see we use this product called Seal Dry. Essentially that is um, providing a final sort of water barrier around the bottom of the window. A lot of times water wants to get behind the window and collect on the sill behind it. So if that happens in this case, it hits that sort of plastic layer and you can't see it, but it has a drainage plane underneath the window. So it would drain out underneath right here and come out that way. Now, what about the windows themselves? Well, you can see it's looking pretty awesome. We got our giant windows installed back here. We've got the, um, 
that's the patio door you're looking at. Sharon's big office window there. This one is where the stove's gonna go. This one's where the sink's gonna go. And that second big window there is where my office will be. So that was pretty cool. We got these windows installed without too much difficulty since they're really big, they're also really heavy. But we are fortunate enough to have an excavator that lifts heavy things. And so we use that plus a glass lifter with some big suction cups and with a little bit more help from dad. He was um, running the machine. Sharon and I could sort of hold the window with a couple of handheld suction cups but not really have to hold up its weight. And then we could um, just kind of slowly maneuver them into place, lean them into the jam, and then uh, just screw them in. So we're able to do that job without too much trouble. We'll come back and talk about these windows probably later. They are pretty cool. They're uh, very high performance. So uh, more, more details to be shared on those later. But uh, for now, we're just, I guess, going over the updates on the outside building envelope. All right, one more final detail here about the um, some of the layers you may be seeing down here at the bottom, you may have noticed this metal flashing bit. Uh, essentially, that's um, right there at the, the brick ledge layer. You may remember in the concrete video, we were discussing how we've got about a one inch difference between this edge of the concrete and where the actual framing sits up here. So again, just as a water shedding layer, the way it works, if you're some water and you got back here, this edge will get flashed. It uh, comes over this metal flashing and gets uh, kicked out and drained away from the building. Just kind of keeping the water away from the framing. So that layer is almost done. Um, but also, yeah, not too hard to install. Just kind of go, go around the perimeter and uh, screw those pieces in. And just get a little bit of extra uh, water insurance. Now you may be thinking, well, it seems like a lot of uh, effort for all that waterproofing. Isn't it uh, actually usually pretty dry there in California? And you're right, normally it is. However, we do get quite a bit of rain in the winter. And as you can see, there are no eaves on this house. So there's no overhang. Essentially, we have to treat the walls a lot like a roof because uh, any rain coming even slightly sideways will get the walls pretty wet. So just uh, taking a few extra steps there on the waterproofing to make sure we don't have any issues down the road. So I think that's about it for this update. We have started doing some framing inside, but that's not done. And you know, we've been working on this project for the last uh, four months now. Pretty good progress. Been working hard because it is now hot and dry. So the nice thing is we'll be able to uh, start working inside on framing, electrical, mechanical, and so forth. So stay tuned. We'll see you next time.